Thank you. We continue this afternoon with portfolio questions. And just before we begin, I would remind members that questions four, six and eight uh, will be grouped together. Now, question one has been withdrawn, so we begin with question number two, Liam Kerr. Officer, to ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on when it will bring forward measures to improve the input that victims and their families have into the temporary release process. Minister Ashton. As outlined in a previous written answer to Liam Kerr on the 1st of March 2019, we are committed to improving the information and the support available to victims and families when prisoners are released. The Scottish Government has established a victims task force which is considering how victims can receive more timely information and have a stronger voice in decisions that affect them. And this includes work by the Scottish Prison Service and Victim Support Scotland, which from the 1st of May uh, this year, enables victims of life sentence offenders to make representations in person to a member of the Scottish Prison Service. On the first occasion, the prisoner is considered for temporary release. Um, prior to this, representations were only able to be made in writing. Liam Kerr. Thank the Minister for that answer. President Officer, it's now been over eight months, 36 weeks to the day, in fact, since the Justice Secretary promised concrete action on temporary release during my members' debate on Michelle's Law. And in that time, actually, there has been zero action. Indeed, I have a copy of the letter that the Stuart family has written to the Justice Secretary saying that despite his promises, they have had no updates and they are still encountering confusion and miscommunication. Minister, information and support are not enough. So I, I ask the Minister, when will the Cabinet Secretary honour his promise to Michelle Stewart's family and deliver a specific requirement for the prison service to take victim welfare into account, published reasons for release decisions, representations in person for victims and families, and more use of exclusion zones. Minister. Um, I thank the member for raising that. I believe that the letter that he has referred to was dated, was it this week, was it the 15th of May, something like that? So obviously the Cabinet Secretary will respond to that letter in a, in a timely fashion when he returns from his paternity leave. Um, in terms of the asks that were set out in the Michelle's uh, law campaign, the government is undertaking a range of actions about improving um, the support for victims and a number of the things that the, um, the member has mentioned. So specifically on welfare of victims, the parole consultation, which we published on the 19th of December, that focused on proposals to improve the openness and the transparency of parole and how to strengthen victims' voices in the parole process. And this is in line with the commitment that we made in our programme for government. And also um, moving on to the point that the member made around exclusion zones, um, as he will no doubt be aware, the management of offenders bill which has just concluded stage two in Parliament, will improve the electronic monitoring capabilities available in Scotland. And this introduction of GPS tagging will mean that exclusion zones for people being monitored on particular licenses and orders can now, will then be able to be monitored in new ways. So the Scottish Government has made clear its intention to work very closely with a number of justice partners, and that includes the third sector, and uh, victims groups, both in developing these pilots in, in technology and also in, in improving things like exclusion zones and welfare of victims in the case that um, the member has raised. And Alistair Allen. Uh, in the situation she has outlined and indeed in other situations, uh, can the minister uh, outline what, is, what the Scottish Government uh, is doing to support victims of crime over the longer term? Yes, sir. This government has a positive record in strengthening the rights of victims and witnesses and the support that is available to them. In 2019-20, we are providing £18 million to support victims of crime, including to third sector organisations who provide practical and emotional support to victims and their families. And this includes £4.6 million to Victim Support Scotland, and that's as part of a three-year funding package totalling £13.8 million over the period 2018 to 2021. Victim Support Scotland community-based victim services help people affected by crime to access information, practical help, emotional support and guidance as they go through the criminal justice system. And they also provide support to enable victims and witnesses to cope better in the aftermath of a crime and to find the strength to move on with their lives. Question number three, Finlay Carson. To ask the Scottish Government how it ensures that community payback orders are fully completed. Minister. 
delivering community payback orders and ensuring completion of these orders is the responsibility of the relevant local authority. 70% of orders are successfully completed as reported in criminal justice social work statistics for 2017-18. And individuals will have cases reviewed in court if the progress is not satisfactory. Around 7 million hours of unpaid work have been carried out since community payback orders were introduced, delivering real benefits for communities. Updated CPO practice guidance was published in January, and this supports effective practice and reiterates the importance of successful completion. The Scottish Government is working with national and local partners, including Community Justice Scotland, to help ensure that orders are implemented as effectively as possible. And funding of over £1 million uh, 100 million pounds for justice social work supports effective delivery of community sentences which have helped achieve a 19-year low in reconviction rates. Finley Carson. Presiding officer, the latest facts show that a shocking 3 in 10 community payback orders go ignored. These are real offenders who have committed serious crimes going unpunished in this SNP's watch. So how can the SNP government justify its play, plans to take thousands more criminals on the, onto these orders when they're currently failing to deliver? Minister. Community payback orders are not just abandoned. 70% of orders are successfully completed and individuals will have cases reviewed in court if progress is not satisfactory. And the court will determine the most appropriate next action including a, kiss, a custodial disposal or another order. We expect local authorities who are responsible for compliance to prioritise their completion. And CPOs are a robust option focused on paying back to communities and we know that they work. Individuals released from a custodial sentence of 12 months or less are reconvicted almost twice as often as those given a CPO. And I would say to the member that we know that the Conservatives least are looking to Scotland at our smart justice model You're not listening. and in uh, specifically in terms of the fact that short-term sentences are not effective and community payback orders are smart justice evidence-led alternative to custody yeah. can, I ask members, can I ask members not to have conversations while either other members are asking questions or the minister is responding Keith Brown a the Scottish Tories claim that Scottish Government prison reforms will mean 10,000 serious criminals are back on the street. I don't know if this came from the Tory Minister for Numbracy or somebody else, but not only is a ludicrously false statement being greater than the entire prison population across Scotland, it's at odds with the position of their colleagues in Westminster. So does the Minister think it's important to point out that the Justice Secretary, David Gock, is on record supporting our smart justice approach of extending a presumption against ineffective short sentences? I do. I want a smarter justice system that reduces repeat crime by providing robust community alternatives to ineffective short prison sentences, supporting offenders to turn away for, from crime for good. Not my words, but the words of the Conservative Justice Secretary, ah. David Gopp, which he said oh. in today's Guardian. <laughs> Extending the presumption against short sentences in Scotland will help ensure that prison is only used where the judiciary decide it is necessary, having considered the alternatives available to them. And the presumption that we were discussing earlier is not a ban, but it is part of a broader preventative approach to reducing victimisation, which has contributed to a 19-year low in reconviction rates. Thank you. So I'd remind members that questions 4, 6 and 8 are going to be grouped. Question number 4, Boris Corey. Thank you, President Officer. Um, to ask the Scottish Government how many divisional police officers there are. Minister Ashton. <clears throat> the Scottish Government do not publish statistics on the number of divisional police officers in Scotland, but the latest figures published by Police Scotland show that there were um, 1,495 officers providing national support, 3,157 officers deployed across the three policing regions, and 12,599 officers in our local divisions. These resources ensure that Police Scotland has a core complement of officers who are always dedicated locally to community and response policing, and they can then additionally draw on specialist expertise and resources to support that local policing, providing the right people in the right place at the right time to keep people safe and meet the needs of our communities. 
The latest police officer quarterly strength statistics were published on the 7th of May, and they show that there are 17,251 police officers in Scotland, and that was on the 31st of March this year. Maurice Corey. Uh, <clears throat> I thank the Minister for her response. The presiding officer, the latest figures actually show that Nicola Sturgeon's government is continuing to dismantle frontline local policing. Divisional officers, who are the ones patrolling our streets and responding to our calls, have dropped by over 400 since the SNP created Scotland, uh, Police Scotland. Isn't it time local policing, presiding officer, was restored rather than the more SNP centralisation? Minister. The operational deployment of police officers is obviously a matter for the Chief Constable and the Deputy Chief Constable, Will Kerr, who leads on local policing reported to the Scottish Police Authority on the 6th of May that the 360 police officers in the Brexit National Reserve would return to normal duties, and I believe that's the officers that the member is referring to, that they would return to their normal duties, including local policing, by the 10th of May. So that should already have occurred. DCC Kerr highlighted that in, additional, that in addition to policing Brexit-related events, the National Reserve officers had shown significant personal flexibility in assisting with a range of events across our communities, and that included missing person cases, high-profile football matches, and murder inquiries. But on the, the wider point of police numbers, I think it is quite unbelievable that a Conservative member should come to this chamber and try to score points about police numbers, when since 2007, police numbers have fallen by almost 20,000 in England and Wales, where, of course, the Conservatives are in power. Now, if police numbers in Scotland had been cut at the same rate that the Conservatives have cut police numbers down south, we'd have just 14,000 police officers in Scotland, and that is 3,000 fewer police officers. 3,000 police officers on our streets, 3,000 police officers in our communities. So I hope that reassures the member that the SNP government is investing in police numbers, be that nationally or locally. Question six, Bruce Crawford. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government about how much police office numbers have risen over the last year. Minister. The Scottish Government has been clear. Um, uh, quarterly uh, strength statistics published on the 7th of May show that there were an increase um, to 17,251 police officers in Scotland, and that was of the 31st of March, which is an increase of 81 police officers in the last year. Minister, sorry, uh, Bruce Crawford. I used to be. Um, <laughs> police numbers are up. Crime is at a record low. There's a remarkable achievement considering the substantial Tory cuts to Holyrood's budget. In contrast, police numbers have been slashed in England by the Tories. Would the Cabinet Secretary join with me in calling for the UK Government to fund fully any policing costs associated with their Brexit omni shambles, particularly following reports that up to 400 police officers could be deployed to help handle the aftermath of crashing out of the EU without a deal? Minister. I would. The Scottish Government has been clear that the costs relating to EU exit should not have a detrimental impact on Scotland's public finances. We have written to the Chancellor outlining that any additional costs related to the policing of Brexit should fall to the UK Government. Where additional policing costs have been incurred, wholly due to EU exit related preparations, we have committed to ensuring that these costs are met. In parallel, we will continue to pursue the costs of EU exit with the UK Government. Uh, if, the, if I take any supplementaries, they'll be after all three questions that are grouped together. Question eight, uh, Kenneth Gibson. Uh, thank you, presiding officer. To ask the Scottish Government how many police officers are currently deployed in Ayrshire and how this compares with May 2007. Minister. The Scottish Government do not publish statistics on the number of police officers deployed in Ayrshire, but the latest figures published by Police Scotland show that there were 826 officers in the Ayrshire division. Supported by 1,512 officers deployed across the West region and 1,495 officers providing support nationally. These resources ensure that Police Scotland has a core complement of officers who are always dedicated locally to community and response policing and they can then additionally draw on specialist expertise and resources to support local policing providing the right people in the right place at the right time to keep people safe 
and meet the needs of our communities. And the latest police officer quarterly strength statistics were published on the 7th of May and they show that there are 17,251 police officers in Scotland. Kenneth Gibson. I thank the Minister for that answer and it's quite clear that uh, Ayrshire has uh, benefited from the additional police numbers provided by this government as opposed to the issue, the situation we have in England where there are thousands and thousands of fewer police officers. Can the Minister say what the impact of these additional officers has been in terms of crime levels in Ayrshire? Minister. Between 2008-9 and 2017-18, the volume of crimes recorded by the police in Ayrshire fell by 39% from 25,641 to 15,696 crimes. And this compares with an equivalent fall of 35% across Scotland as a whole during the same period. A supplementary from Liam Kerr. Thank you, presiding officer. Look, Minister, focusing on Scotland as we're supposed to do, local frontline divisional officers are down by over 400 since last year. Those are Police Scotland's figures. Does she accept that fact, yes or no? Minister. As I explained in a previous answer to one of the member's colleagues, there are 360, or at that point when that information was provided, there were 360 police officers that had been taken from local policing and moved into a national reserve for Brexit, which Scotland did not vote for, which the Conservative government is imposing on Scotland against our will. So in order to be prepared, that had happened. At the point that Brexit, the Brexit preparedness has been stepped down a level, because um, we're not imminently facing um, a no-deal scenario, those police officers would then be moved back into their normal rotation, which takes a number of weeks, and that will follow through. But overall, the police numbers in Scotland are up. They are up 81 over the last um, year. They are um, the highest number, and much and higher than um, at any time during the previous administration, even prior to 2007. Question number five, Richard Lyle. Thank you, President Officer, to ask the Scottish Government what plans it has to review how children's interests are best served by family courts. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. President Officer, the Scottish Government consulted last year on a review of the Children's Scotland Act 1995. This is the key legislation in relation to parental responsibilities and rights and contact and residence. The programme for government announced that there will be a family law bill. One of the aims of the Family Law Bill will be to ensure that the child's best interests are at the centre of family court cases. Richard Lyle. Can I welcome the comments made by the Cabinet Se Secretary and thank him for that answer. Having to go to family court can be stressful for all. Family courts should try and look at the bigger picture and try to ensure that children's needs are met. Too often it's lawyer against lawyer with the family in the middle, with legal bills mounting, one party blaming the other. How can we improve this? system to make sure it's less stressful and most of all ensure that family contact centres are also regulated. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President Officer, I, I recognise the seriousness of the issues that Mr Lyle raises and the importance in our response to the type of information that he has raised that we put the child at the centre of all decision making in how these matters are handled and that fits with the wider agenda to put the child at the centre of all of our decision making, whether it's around education, whether it's around the justice system, whether it's around the health and well-being of young people and children into the bargain. Um, I'm very much aware of the research that demonstrates that court action in relation to contact and residence can be a stressful experience for children and for uh, families. As part of the family justice modernisation strategy, the Minister for Community Safety will look specifically to improve guidance for parties attending court. One of the key aims of the forthcoming Family Law Bill is to ensure that the best interests of the child are always put at the centre of that legislation. And we sought views on the regulation of child contact centres as part of the consultation on the review of the Children's Scotland Act 1995. Consultation responses were strongly in favour of regulation and we'll take these views on board when considering the areas that will be included in the forthcoming Family Law Bill. Thank you. Question seven, Willie Coffey. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government how its new victim support service will help the families of victims of crime and the families of people involved in fatal accidents and sudden deaths. Minister Ashton. Victim Support Scotland's new service is providing dedicated and continuous support for families bereaved by murder or culpable homicide. 
we recognise that other victims might benefit from this type of support and so we're going to work with partners to ensure that lessons learned from the development of the new service will inform any future changes to its scope. In 2019-20, we are providing £18 million to help victims, including to third sector organisations who provide practical, emotional and financial assistance. The Victims Task Force is also considering ways to improve end-to-end -end support throughout the criminal justice process and beyond. Willie Coffey. Can I thank the Minister for that answer? Over the years, presiding officer, I've had many local cases where families have lost a loved one and have said that the level of support provided to them was limited or didn't happen at all. Can she just give me an assurance that the immediate families who do lose a loved one know exactly what help is available locally, that they can access that support for as long as they might need it, and in so doing, help them in their own journey of recovery? Minister. We're taking a range of actions to ensure that victims are at the centre of our justice system. And through our investment, Victim Support Scotland provided free and confidential support to more than 50,000 victims of crime in 2017-18. And this new service for families bereaved by murder and culpable homicide builds on this support to provide a designated key worker to help the family with a range of issues such as understanding the prosecution process, attending court and so on. Um, I would say to the member that if he has any specific cases um, he would like to follow up, um, either I or the Cabinet Secretary for Justice would be happy to meet with him and to um, take those up with him at that point. Thank you very much. And at that point, we'll conclude portfolio questions. Uh, we're going to move on to the next item of business, which is a debate on uh, the impact of Brexit on Scotland's food and drink. But we'll just take a few moments for the Minister and members and others to change seats. <laughs>